pueblo donde he nacido Inmensa nostalgia invade mi pensamiento Y al verme tan solo y triste cual hoja al viento Quisiera llorar, quisiera morir de sentimiento Tierra del sol, suspiro por verte, ahora que lejos yo vivo sin luz, sin amor, y al verme tan solo y triste, cual hoja al viento, quisiera llorar, quisiera morir de sentimiento. Welcome to the uh, first stop on our spring 2011 trip to Big Bend National Park. Mm. The geological history of almost anywhere can be deciphered by constructing a series of overlapping stories. The material for these stories comes from aspects of the geological world which we can observe and describe in the field. Here are some starting points for constructing geological stories about stops along our field trip route. First, consider rocks themselves. Observe and describe a few nearby rocks which can, you can press your nose against. What you see and describe are potential material for stories about the origin of these rocks in the geological past. Most of these stories are about sediments being deposited or molten rock cooling. They are depositional stories. Second, consider the arrangement of massive rock in place. Observe and describe how large bodies of rock within your view are layered, tilted, or broken. You're looking for evidence of displacement, disruption, or past movement. Thus begins a structural story of the geologic past. Third, consider where and how rock in place is exposed. Observe and describe how large rock bodies in your view are expressed as part of the surrounding landscape. This exercise launches us into matters of landscape evolution, which is a physiographic story of the geologic past. These starting points of stories are worth remembering. Perhaps this handy mantra suitable for field recitation will help. Rock, rock arrange, rock expose. Why Big Bend National Park? It is probably the best outdoor natural laboratory for geologic and biologic topics that I know of. The White Rock Escarpment is Austin Chalk, the chalk we live on. And what it represents is a landscape former. It's a term geologists use to suggest certain rocks are more resistant to erosion than other rocks. When you get differences in erosional ability or capacity, you get various kinds of landscapes. And we'll see that in abundance out in West Texas. But for the time being, be aware that the lay of the land is a product of the geology. All right, let me give you the briefest of geological and geographic introductions to the park. I know, I know, I've already given you a bunch of lectures and you're like, eh, how can I take this? Well, it's a little different because now we're in it, right? Um, I want to give you, uh, first of all, a sense of where we are. We're in the Chisos Mountain Basin, obviously a basin, topographically speaking, because we are surrounded by higher ground. The rock story. From right here, you're looking out on a whole bunch of fascinating, I mean, the rocks to me look kind of like a Chinese landscape painting, you know, with lots of verticals and, mm -hmm. and exposed rock, and it just, I don't know, I think it's just it's cool. Um, these all have names. There's Pulliam Peak. There's... Uh, I think that's uh, 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 Vernon Bailey, Pete Carter, what have you. But all these arrayed here, past the window, are the same kind of rock. They're an intrusive igneous rock. In other words, they came into surrounding sediment and rock under pressure, hot molten material, but it didn't break the surface. Or if it did, we've lost all that record. It's been stripped away. So the rock story is we're going back 30, 40 million years, and we're seeing a bunch of stuff that cooled underground 
fairly slowly. Now, it's not necessarily related to a volcano, what we think it may have been, but effectively, as I suggested in our lecture setting, we're looking at the plumbing of a volcano. And that applies to all the irregular stuff you see all the way around until you look off over this ridge, which you can do if you get out in the parking lot, and you'll be looking up at our destination Friday, which is Emory Peak, the highest point in the park and the third highest point in the state of Texas. That whole area up there is geologically different. It's like that peak right there, the meatloaf shape body, which I shall, I shall now stop calling meatloaf shape. It's called Casa Grande, and it's a very appropriate name. Big house. It kind of looks like a big house, sort of. Casa Grande is not intrusive igneous rock, molten underground. It is volcanic. What is it like camping in the basin? It's a bit like camping in a crater. First time I came to Big Bend, I arrived at night. It was dark. It was misty. It was atmospheric. It fulfilled what the term or the name Chisos Mountains is thought to mean, among other meanings, and that is ghosts. Which trail stands out most? A hike to the South Rim. The trail guide cited as the classic hike in Texas, and I would concur. I'd say that what really makes the impression is once you start to anticipate the rim and the climb towards it becomes sort of an ascent into a landscape like almost none other. The view opens, and what you get at the end of it is the dividend of looking very far, some days more than 50 miles, into Mexico with almost no settlement anywhere in view, certainly not in the national park. What should students get from this course? I think, first of all, they should have an aesthetic experience, something, of course, they recall they document in their field guides and they could come back to as a remembrance. But I think more significantly than that, they need to have an appreciation for what science is up to, fundamentally a scientific way of knowing the world, that is in this case geology and biology, but also that sensibility that really is about, first of all, getting to know something. And by knowing it better, you invariably, I think, care more about it. And in caring more about it, well, you're in a better position to make uh, judgments that may assure such things as our environment being intact uh, for our grandchildren. This project is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivative, 3.0 license.